Hey, is anybody happy to be in church today? Anybody happy? Yeah. Anybody come ready to receive the word of God? You just, you're ready. All right, we're going to continue talking about, last week we talked about freedom. And this week I want to talk about staying free. Just a little recap of what we talked about last week. We said that, that we want and we believe that God wants us to have complete freedom. Not just partial freedom. Not just freedom in one area of our life, but freedom in every area of life of our life. And so we said last week that uh, freedom is more than deliverance. Deliverance will prepare you for freedom. Freedom is more than just a quick fix to your problem. Freedom is actually a path that God has for you. That's important because, I, listen, I'm thankful. I'm thankful when God comes to my rescue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm thankful. I've been in those situations where I'm like, oh God, please, Help me right now. I mean, like right now. Anybody ever been there? And God comes to your, he comes to your rescue. That's just the kind of God he is. But, but as we begin to walk this out and walk our faith and be, become a disciple, we don't want to live in that cycle to where every work, like, oh, God, help me out again. Okay. We, we want to be able to get on the path that God has for us, and that path will bring joy blessings and peace, right? So that we could actually be an answer to somebody else's prayer. Instead of always needing prayer, always being in the place of need, we can be in a place of abundance where we have overflow because we're walking on this path, all right? So uh, we, we talked about how that freedom is more than just restrictions and limitations. Freedom is the acceptance of responsibility. We realize that we have been entrusted with the Holy Spirit that we are carriers of the presence of God. They, I mean, just think about it. If you're a believer, God put his Holy Spirit inside of you. So he's entrusted us with that. And so he's given us gifts, talents, anointings, experiences, things we walk through. And we have to steward those, right? That requires responsibility. All right. So this week, like I said, I want to talk about staying free. We're going to receive communion in just a few minutes. And so let me read this to you. Galatians 5 and verse 1 says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. Yes. <laughs> right? This is, this is so important. Christ has set us free. Now we need to make sure that we stay free. Would you turn to that person next to you and tell them, make sure you stay free. Would you do that? Hey, would you do this? Help me out. Turn to the person behind you and tell them, say, hey, no, no, look at me. Make sure you stay free. Would you do that? All right. And it says, don't get tied up again in the slavery to the law. Obviously, it's talking about legalism here. And, and so we want to be able to stay free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three things um, that we can do to stay free, to make sure that we stay free. And, and within those three things, I'm going to give you some more things on actually how, how to do that. So the first thing, if we're going to stay free, we need to make sure that we keep pursuing Jesus. Yeah. I know that sounds obvious. Everything I'm going to say today is obvious. But we, when we get saved and God delivers us and we begin to walk out our freedom, we got to make sure that we keep pursuing Jesus. Yeah. It's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to look to the left, look to the right, and begin to look at other people and uh, look at their life. And we get distracted by what they're doing. And I just want to tell you, make sure that you're running your race. Don't run somebody else's race. Don't cut it on them. Don't try to tell them what to do. You run your race, right? The race that God has for you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Now, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, when you search for me, Jeremiah 29, 13, when you search for me with all your, come on, help me out with all your heart, right? This is, look at the promise. He says, you're going to find me. What a great thing to know that 
that Jesus, he, he actually wants to be found. He wants you to find him. If you're pursuing, if you're going after God, God will reveal himself to you. God will show you deep things. He's going to reveal his personality to you. God wants you to know him. And as you're going after him, as you're drawing near to God, right, as you're pursuing him, he's going to draw near to you. It is a promise that we have in Scripture. I like to say you're as close to God as you want to be. The only thing that is stopping you is you, right? You can draw near. If you draw near, he'll draw close to you. Okay. So let me give you some things. I'm going to read this passage in Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 1. And then I'm going to give you some things under this that, that can help us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Yeah. Now, the word hinders means weight, anything that's weighing you down. It, like a, think of like a baggage or a backpack that's weighing you down. You're trying to run a race with this heavy thing on your back, right? It says we got to remove that. We got to throw that off. And the sin that so easily entangles us. How many know that sin can get you tangled up, right? And let us run with perseverance. That means not giving up, right? The race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes. Here it is, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer of our faith and the perfecter of our faith. The God who started our faith is going to finish our faith. The God who started something in you is going to complete it in you. Amen? You got to just keep your eyes on him. And the way that we do that, you can write this down, is we got to remove any distractions from our life. And so what I like to ask is, what's got my attention right now? What's got my focus? Again, we go through life. We're just minding our own business. Some things cut in on us, right? Life happens. Sometimes we get interested in something. We get distracted by something, and then it becomes a time waster. And then we look back and say, man, I've lost my focus because I've allowed this thing to distract me. So what I want to ask you is allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now and just ask, but what's been distracting me? What's been distracting me from pursuing you? And the, the scripture tells us that if we're going to stay free, if we're going to stay free, we got to get rid of those weights and that sin that tries to tangle us up, try, tries to trip us up, right? And so we got to get free of some things. It can be baggage from your past. It can be a wound that was never healed. It can be a failed relationship, a broken heart that still haunts you, right? It can be a secret sin, a hidden sin, jealousy, resentment, unforgiveness, confused sexuality, guilt, shame, right? All of that stuff, we got to make sure that we let go of some things. You're not going to be able to run the race and keep your eyes on Jesus if you're tangled up with distractions and sins in your life. And let me, let me just say this. It's not just sins. It's some things can be good, but they're not the best thing that God has for you. They can be good. I'm not saying they're evil, but it's keeping you from the best thing that God has for you. The second thing that we need to do if we're going to keep on pursuing Jesus, still under that point number one, is we got to remember what he did for us on the cross. Amen. Listen, anytime you start to drift a little bit in your walk and of faith and, and you're drifting from that path, re stop and remember what Jesus did on that cross for you. Amen. Remember what he won for you. Remember... Come on, where he brought you from. Can I get an amen from somebody today, right? We know that because of the cross, the cross is an act of love. And because Jesus went through the cross, it means that Satan has no rights to you any longer. You can, you can speak that over your life. Listen, Jesus was punished so that we could be forgiven. I'm talking about what he did on the cross. He was wounded so we could be healed. He was made sin so that we could be made righteous. He bore our shame so that we could share in his glory. He was rejected, the Bible tells us. Why? So that we could have acceptance. The Bible even tells us in Galatians that he became a curse for us so that we could be blessed. All right. Write this one down uh, too. I just kind of slipped this one in this morning and added it to the notes because I think this is important. Is stay generous. If you're going to keep on pursuing Jesus, you've got to stay generous. I mean, 
uh, Junior read that verse, John 3, 16, about God, that God gave. That's the, the spirit of God. The heart of God is giving. The Bible tells us, let me read this to you. Uh, Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. And so every once in a while, you got to check yourself and say, hey, yeah. am I being generous? Have I given to somebody else? Not somebody who's going to give back to me. But have, have I just given and blessed somebody? Check your generosity because where your heart is, where your, the Bible says where your treasure is, excuse me, that's where your heart is. Your heart's going to follow where you put your treasure, right? All right, next, second thing, if we're going to stay free, is we got to renew our mind daily with God's word. We got to renew our mind daily with God's word. And again, I'm going to give you four ways that you can renew your mind with the word of God, all right? Here you go, number one. Read the Word of God. I told you it's going to be real deep. It's going to be real deep today. You got to read the Word. You say, James, is that really that important? Yes, that's important. Because as you're reading the Word, something is happening to your mind. Let me read it for you. Let me read it for you. Ephesians 5, 25 and verse 26. It says, husbands, love your wives. Everybody say, that's a good word. Come on, love your, love your own wives, right? There you go. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Verse 26. Here you go. Watch this. This is what he did. To make her holy. This is what he did. He, he, he loves us, right? To make us holy, cleansing her or cleansing us, talking about the church, by washing with the water through the word. So the point is, Read the Word. Read your Bible. Why do you read the Word? Why do you read the Bible? Because as you're simply reading the Bible, the Word of God is washing your mind. It's cleansing your mind. You say, James, is that important? It's important because you know why? We pick up things. We see things. We watch things. We hear things. Just living in the world. It may even be by accident. It may be intentional. Whatever it is, if you read the word of God, it will wash your mind. We're to have the mind of Christ. The second thing, the second thing we're to do, right, to how we renew our mind by reading the Word of God, is by meditating on the Word of God. Now, what does the word meditate mean? The word meditate means to engage in thought, to contemplate, to reflect, to ponder. To, it's like saying the same thing over and over again in your mind. See, the Bible talks about the Word of God. It's a whole parable about this in Scripture. The Word of God is like a seed. And it goes into our hearts, right? And the way that it takes root right, and germinates is, is by meditation as we're thinking about the Word of God, as we're pondering over the Word of God, as we're looking at the Word of God and saying, mm, that's good, oh, that's good, I need that, look at that, look what the Word of God is saying there. Now, you may say, James, I don't know if I know how to do that. Well, let me help you out. How many of you know how to worry? <laughs> Has worry ever kept you up at night? I mean, you're just worrying about something. You're thinking about it. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, they're probably thinking this, and now they're going to do that. And, oh, my God, my, my life is over, right? And we play this whole, just in our mind through worry, just this one thing. We can make a whole movie. And we're just sitting there eating popcorn, right, as we're just watching this movie that we played out through worry. Now, meditation is the same thing just on the positive. It's where we take the Word of God and we, yes, we think yes. about it over, we, and we begin to play this movie out. Oh, yeah, God is for me. Oh, yeah, God is good. Oh, yeah, he went to the cross. He saw me. I, and you're, you're meditating on the Word of God. And as you're meditating on the Word of God, it goes deep, and it's beginning to get down in there, and it's all the, all the crevices of your heart meditating on the Word of God. That's how we renew our minds, by meditating on the Word of God. All right. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says, you will keep, Isaiah 26 and verse 3, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, 
whose thoughts are what? Are fixed on you. That's meditation. You're just you're thinking about it. You're just concentrating. You're meditating. All right. The third thing we do is we speak the word. So we read the word, we meditate on the word, and then we speak the word. Man, I just, I hope you get this. Get the word of God in your heart, but don't let it stay in your heart. Speak it out, right? Release that word into the atmosphere. Come on. Use the word of God to prophesy to yourself. Prophesy to your future using the word of God. There are so many Christians. God's trying to bless you, but you are speaking against the word. Come on, that he has for your life. You can't curse what God is trying to bless. I mean, God's trying to bless you and you're using your own words, cursing yourself. All right. I love Joel 3.10 says, let the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. Prophesy to yourself. Come on, I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord, right? All right. Proverbs 18.21 says, the tongue, the tongue has the power of life and death. Let's just think about it for a minute. Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that what we say, what comes out of our mouth has the power of life and death? This is why, this is why the Bible talks about when you gossip, when you slander somebody else. The Bible actually puts, puts that sin, I, I should have put it up on the screen, I'm sorry, puts that sin in the same category as murder. Think about that, gossip. Why is that? Because when you're gossiping about somebody, when you're talking about somebody, you're actually assassinating their character without them even knowing it. And what happens is, I'm I'm talking today about staying free. And if you're not careful, what comes out of your mouth may lead you back into bondage. Talking about people, speaking negative, gossiping, right? Murmuring. We know, we know, I mean, we can just go back to the Old Testament and we see that the, 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 the Israelites, the people of Israel, the reason why they were kept out of the promised land is because what was coming out of their mouth, complaining. This verse goes on to tell us that we're going to eat from the fruit of our lips. Whatever comes out of our mouth, that's what we're, that's what's going to, that's what we're going to live out in our own life. Maybe you don't agree with me, so let me give you one more verse. This is Jesus, okay? Matthew 12, 37 says, For by your words you will be acquitted or set free, right? And by your words you'll be condemned. Jesus is saying, you got a choice, life and death, acquittal or condemnation. By simply what comes out of your mouth. Help me, Jesus. Come on, help me, Jesus. Somebody, right? I'm talking about if we're going to stay free, we got to get the word of God in us. We got to meditate on it. But then we got to begin to speak the word of God. God wants to bless you. God wants to pour out his goodness in you. Don't allow what comes out of your mouth to lead you back into slavery again. We're not called to slavery. We're called to freedom. Again, maybe you don't believe me. Let me give you another one. I think you believe me. Revelation 12, 11. Look at this verse. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Now, we all know about the blood, right? Nothing can forgive sin except the blood of Jesus, right? It's the only thing we're going to take communion in just a minute to remember what he did for us, the blood, right? And think about this. And the word of their testimony. That's talking about our testimony. We literally overcome by the blood, yes, and by what comes out of our mouth. You say, James, I want to be free, but I'm bound. I say, what's coming out of your mouth? Right? What's coming out of your mouth? Speak life. 
Speak life over your own life. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your spouse. Speak life over your coworkers. Speak life over our city, right? Speak life. All right. You stay with me. Let me just let me just keep going here with this point. We believe in deliverance. And the first thing that we do in deliverance, when you're in there getting delivered, the first thing that they'll do is they'll take you through where you have to renounce some things. Renounce means I no longer want that to be part of my, I, with my own mouth, coming out of my mouth, I'm saying, Satan, you have no legal right to me. I renounce any affiliation. I renounce any curse from my family background. I mean, there's, you're just renouncing all this stuff, right? You have to renounce, but that's not all you have to do. You also have to announce some things. You, re, you renounce your affiliation with Satan, with curses over your life, but then you got to announce Christ is my Savior. I am holy. I am blameless. I am righteous. I can do all things. What are you doing? You're announcing it. I'm not just renouncing. Now I'm announcing. I'm saying this is who I am in Christ. Amen. Let me just make it real easy for you. Try this in the morning. Just take some scriptures and announce them over your life. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. And you just, you're beginning to speak that over your life, right? Turn to somebody next to you and say, I hope you were listening to that. Would you do that? Just tell them, I hope you were listening to that. <laughs> All right. All right. They got communion back here, so I got to hurry up. Okay. Ushers, just wait a minute. Tell the ushers back there just to wait. Don't come. Just wait. Let me finish. No, they're awesome. All right. Last one is we have to obey the word of God. So we speak the word of God, we meditate on it, we read it, but then we actually have to obey it, right? James 1, 22, I'm not gonna spend time on that. You, we know that. Okay, the next third thing, the last point, it's to stay free, we're gonna have to renew ourselves daily. Not once a week, not just on Sundays, but daily in the Holy Spirit. How do you do this? Prayer, number one, pray. When you pray, you are renewing yourself in the Holy Spirit. Pray the Jabez prayer. Pray the Lord's prayer. Whatever you do, just pray. Romans 8, 26, 27. I don't have time to read it, but it basically says that when, sometimes we don't even know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit will pray through us. The next thing to do, not only do we pray, but pray in tongues. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to renew yourself in the Holy Spirit, when you pray in tongues, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 4 that when we pray in tongues, we are strengthened. We are strengthened. If you're feeling weak, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. I know a lot of churches won't talk about it, but I'm going to tell you, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Speak in tongues. Renew yourself in the Holy Spirit. All right. You got three minutes. Fellowship is the third one. Fellowship. Fellowship is so crucial. The path to freedom cannot be walked out in isolation. If you're going to live in freedom, it's going to be done through relationship. It's going to be in relationships. With other people. It, you cannot do it by yourself. I, I, was, we were, I was just mentioning that we were at this youth conference and I was in one of the leadership sessions with Pastor Dave from the Father's House and it was kind of a question and answer time and he was speaking and one of the questions was basically, you know, Pastor Dave, how have you stayed faithful and contending for revival after all of these years? And what he said was just like, oh my God, that is so awesome. He says, he says, honestly, sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I'm like, God, I have been praying for revival for so long. I'm so tired. He says, but what has happened? He says, I have surrounded myself. Listen to this. I have surrounded myself with other people. 
and other leaders. He says, and even other pastors on his team. And he says, sometimes I'm not even speaking. They're up there speaking. And when I see them, he says, it's like they're pulling me up. They're, they're pulling me along. He says, I may be tired. I may be weary. But their faith, their anointing is actually pulling me up higher. I pray, I pray to God that every single one of you will have people in your life not pulling you down, but people that are pulling you up. They're, they're pulling you up higher. You're going to get tired. There's going to be times when you don't feel like it. But if you get around people, get other people around you, they will lift you up. All right, last one, last one is worship. How do you renew yourself? I'm still on point number three. You renew yourself through worship. I don't know about you, but there's times I'm trying to come to church, but you just get in a fight with somebody that you're riding with, your spouse, your kids. Some, you get in a fight with yourself. I mean, whatever, right? And you come to church and you're like, I just can't, I can't worship today. I, I don't even feel like worshiping today. I'm talking about staying free. Watch this, staying free. If you ever get in the habit of coming to church and just saying, I, I, I'm just not good enough. I had a bad week. I can't worship this Sunday. I, I mean, I'll come, but I'm not, I, I'm not gonna sing. Listen, what I'm saying is worship renews your, it's the way you get renewed in the Holy Spirit. If you could just lift up your hands a little bit. Lift them up a little higher. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But if you can do that. And then the key is to lift up your voice. Because the enemy is always trying to steal your worship. Always trying to steal your praise. But if you can just lift up your voice, nothing's going to stop my praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, would you stand to your feet? Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray.